guys, welcome back to the Rugby Connection podcast. Um, probably the tenth best place to be for all your World Cup news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> top ten good though. Top ten good though. Mm. Top ten's good. Uh, no, obviously the best place to be for all your World Cup uh, goods and other rugby things, but. You can't really look past the World Cup at the moment. Um, it, today, you're very lucky because you don't just have to look at me and Murray. We're joined by Ollie Hoskins. We have uh, the current Saracens player. Yeah. And obviously, um, Australian international. Um, That's and We're going to be, uh, I think once we get to the Australia game, we'll be uh, picking your brains. <laughs> like yeah, I'm funny. looking forward to that. I can't <laughs> wait. No, but we've got Ollie here to uh, talk about all the World Cup news that's happening, all the games that have gone on and all the games to come uh, this coming week. Tomorrow's the first game. Mm. But we'll go back to last week. Uh, We'll start in order. We had, um, I'd say we had quite a few one-sided games on paper and quite a few one-sided games when we actually got down to it. Mm. Do you think, I'll ask you boys before we get onto the results and whatnot, I've heard a few people saying this, um, do you think teams like Romania, Namibia and whatnot, do you think having, because a lot of people have been saying that more fixtures against tier one opponents is going to help these teams, but obviously then we've got the, um, I think it's, it's confirmed that we're having the World League, is it? Oh, the, yeah, the World League that starts... Where, like, where it's going to be part of it. Yeah, a Tier 1 competition and a Tier 2 competition, which yeah. essentially means that these teams aren't going to get Tier 1 fixtures. Do you think it devalues the World Cup? Do you think it maybe takes a little away from the pool stages when you're having big beatings like this left, right and centre? Not personally. No. I think it's the beauty of the World Cup. Like, I think it adds to the adds to the you know what what it is because you don't typically get to see these Chilean players or Uruguayan players or any of this sort of stuff and then they potentially they come out and have performances like the that Uruguay had of, over the weekend uh yeah, and for me like I was I remember while I was watching that game with my wife and my wife suddenly is like Uruguay's my favorite team and now she's just like wants to watch Uruguay play which is great I think that's the beauty of the World Cup um, I don't think it devalues it at all. I do agree that for these nations to really develop and for rugby to push for international game to push forward, that they probably need to get more consistent, high level test matches. Um, but fitting that in the calendar, where against who, like at the end of the day, pro footy is a is a bit is it it's a it's a tough one. Like if you got a an England that like are they going to pick to play against Scotland or Uruguay what's going to sell out to them like it's that sort of stuff too you know it's um where you fit it in the calendar all the logistics around it I understand why it's a it's a weird sub it's a such a deep and complex sort of problem um but they do need better opposition consistent rugby because I feel like some of those teams if they could have a better infrastructure and better like regular games they'd be pushing tier one teams and made much more competitive matches, which is only going to make the World Cup oh, even better. Murray? I agree. No, I completely agree with what I always said there. I think, yeah. I don't know, I've kind of been making, I don't know why, and I do feel sorry to anyone that's supporting this country, but I, you are getting picked on for this one. I always think it's funny right now for Romania, because technically they're not even meant to be in this World Cup. No, because uh, they they qualified off the back of Spain being... Spain being naughty boys. Yeah. Mm. I'm not saying Spain would have made a shred of difference, but especially in that yeah. group on their end. But I just feel like yeah. are you I'm, just... I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely in agreement. I think, you know, just the fact that we get to see a performance like Uruguay versus uh, versus France, mm-hmm. um, the likes of uh, the Chilean fly half, Rodrigo Fernandez, what a player he is. And, mm. you know, rugby fans, you know, your average rugby fan wouldn't get the chance to see him. But, I mean, a stat that I saw and... Um, it was on how many fixtures Japan have had since or in the last World Cup cycle compared to England. Japan yeah. have had 19 fixtures in the last World Cup uh, cycle, whereas England have had 42, 43 fixtures. I'm not saying Japan are, you know, down there with the tier two teams like, Mm-mm. you know, uh, uh, Chile and whatnot. But it goes to show these tier two teams, regardless of the opposition, just aren't having enough games in these World Cup cycles year by year. You know, some of them will go um you know two three four games a year and it's just not enough for these teams no. to to develop whatsoever so 
Hundred percent agree. I I personally don't think it devalues the World Cup. I think it's one of the best parts of the World Cup, especially the pool stages. Um, so basically, Japan played. So basically, Japan played one, not even a full season of Premiership rugby. Exactly, no. which is obviously a few teams were hindered by COVID, but yeah. regardless, their fixtures in the years that they were playing just it's not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. No, that's fair. Speak, sorry, just before, just before we move on, just because yeah, our guest has had some transfer recently in shy circumstances, but yeah. oh, you you have moved. You're now a Saracens player. How have you fit, fit, uh, fit, fit in? Uh, it's been a yeah, it's been a wild couple of months. <laughs> um, between the end of like May, May when the season finished, and and now it's just been an absolute wild ride of transition. In my, in my life um but yeah i'm i'm really enjoying my time at saracens it was such a i was i was so uh, like emotionally invested and loved playing for london irish so much that when this happened it was really just like an absolute kick to the gut to me um and to land at a place like saris where i feel very much at home very quickly um has been a real it's been a real sort of silver lining to come out of this um so it's it's a great environment and they've it's there's great coaches and great boys there and yeah it's um it's pushed me in in different ways and I'm I'm learning new things that I haven't you know haven't been coached on or like focused on for years because I've been playing a certain style of rugby with Irish I was there for so long that you kind of just get you kind of just play the same sort of way because I was in the same system for so long and now you come into a different system where they emphasize different things and you're I'm having to like really think about stuff and switch on my rugby brain again which was kind of like I could almost go being at Irish so long I could kind of I knew the structure of a week I knew the game plans I knew how we played I could literally recite every line out every map every everything in my sleep like I didn't have to think about didn't have to think that much I could just play um, whereas here yeah, I'm really having to think and challenge myself and like the just different defensive systems or way they approach the contact and all that sort of stuff that I have to really you know adapt and change and which is which is nice because I'm I'm 30 years old now I've kind of played professional rugby for 10 years and I feel like I'm learning all this new stuff um, and it's challenging. I, uh, initially, I found it a bit frustrating because I wasn't used to like making many mistakes in training and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's a great thing. Like, it, if I feel like now, if like I'm if I'm not making mistakes here, I don't think I'm really like challenging myself and pushing myself enough. So I'm kind of like chasing mistakes in a way and trying to trying to get feedback and 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 try things. Um, and it's good to have my first game on the weekend. And, and it felt like I hadn't played for four and a half months, which I hadn't. It was, I was rusty <laughs> and my lungs were exploding. Um, but it was good to get that first one out of the way. Um, yeah, I definitely felt a bit rusty, but yeah. Um, it's been a crazy transitional period on and off the pitch with all the logistics around moving clubs and all yeah. the uncertainty and not getting paid and all this crazy stuff that happened with Irish. But now I'm I'm very happy that I've landed on my feet at Saracens. Good. No, 100%. So- and obviously from, from, a, from a fan on the outside view you see a team go down and you're like okay that's a shame London Irish are down these players they'll move to other teams new contracts but for you as a mm-hmm. player it must be like oh well it, it is an absolute like just period of uncertainty obviously you know it's not yeah. just you you have family as well um you know and and, it, and it's your livelihood at the end of the yeah. day so it's so uh, much I more imagine, to it yeah it's I can so imagine much it's an it. absolute weight off your shoulders massively to, to land on your feet to the club like Saracens yeah, it was quite fun. Like during the sort of uncertain periods, where we weren't sure if we were going under or not. And then when we did go under, like the amount of people I'd speak to around and just be like, oh, that's all right. Just move to France or just like go to Japan. You'll get a contract. It's fine. I'm like, yeah. mate, it's not that like, it's not that simple. Like, I don't even have kids and it's not that simple. Like, but yeah. I've got, I, I literally just signed a new lease on my house. I've got a dog. I've got a wife who's just started a new job. There's all this stuff outside of rugby that people were just like, oh, just go to France, get a contract. It's fine. And then I'm like, in a, we obviously came off contract or we, we were on the market at the worst possible time. Like the season's just finished. Every club's already done their recruiting for the next year. Everyone's yeah. at, up, the, everyone's up at the salary, the premiership, the salary cap got reduced. So clubs have less money to spend. We're all off contract. Suddenly 60 players flood the market. So, and the clubs have no money. So all these clubs are just like, okay, I can get internationals for like, for cheap, cheap money. And just like, so you're just getting, yeah 
you have you have this a cer- certainty in rugby. I had two years left of my Irish deal, and I was like, oh, okay, we just signed a new lease in a place based on I'm going to be getting paid this much over the next two years, and you budget and all this sort of stuff, and then, bang, sorry, that's a take a massive pay cut. You're going here. You have like these three options. This is what you're going to get paid. There's nothing you can do about it. And I'm just like, God, oh, I need a job. So I said, like, moving to Sarah is a big thing for me. Was obviously. The on-field stuff is fantastic. It's it's a winning culture. Um, I really like. I haven't won anything apart from two championship promotions in my time at at London Irish, which is still silverware, which is great. But like, I haven't won any like big team accolade trophies, sort of thing. And Saracens puts you in a position to do that every year. They're always going to be like one of the one of the top teams and going for it. Um, and then the coaching and, and them developing me as a player, but mainly like the off field stuff, like getting some stability for my family was like so important for me. Um, so my wife had just started a job and this way as I've just got a bit of a, I've got quite a bit of commute now, but I, we can stay living where we are, but now I've got to commute sort of an hour and 20 minutes each way rather than 15 minutes. I was at at Irish, but it still allows us to keep some sort of stability amidst like the most chaotic, uncertain period of my life. No, hundred percent. Mm. Uh, no, me and Murray have had a lot to say about uh, teams going under. <laughs> we've we've covered this topic yeah. plenty yeah. Um, and the salary cap and whatnot. Um, we won't get into that now because uh, it contentious, the topic, contentious but, uh, topic. Yeah, it's but, very contentious topic. <laughs> it does mean if always in a winning circle with Saracens, we could get a Wallabies call up again. I'm I'm available, mate. I'm available. I'm waiting. For, I'm just waiting for the phone to ring. You never know. Eddie, come the doors out. Get Ollie on the flight to France. I'm around the corner, mate, and I'm I'm on. I'm around the corner, and I'm ready whenever. If if a call ever came, I would be there, and I'd be there the next day. But my phone is not rung. My phone is not rung as of yet. So I just keep on trucking off Fair enough. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get into the World Cup. I'm sorry, but we yep. had to talk about that. The the first game, obviously, uh, last Thursday. Um, France versus Uruguay, on paper, we thought, ah, oh, absolute hamlet, hammering, 50-plus points. Yeah. France picked a, a second-string squad, but you look at the players in that team, the likes yeah. of Makalu and Anton Hastoy, Maxime yeah. Lucu. You know, you look at these players and you're thinking, yeah. I mean, uh, Jalibert was playing for them. You know, he was France's yeah. main guy in, in <laughs> fullback just a couple of Six Nations ago. But it didn't quite go to plan, did it? Didn't quite go to plan at all. Uruguay, they got the win, they got the win but they, they got the win. They did. Um, didn't get a bonus point, did they? Yeah. Ah, no, not again. I no. didn't. No. So the two games in, two wins, but no bonus points for Lebla. That is, yeah, something like that. Like that. That's what I'm talking about. These smaller teams, like okay, Uruguay in in the grand aspect for their campaign. Okay, it's not doing much for them, but. It, yeah. For France's campaign, missing out on a bonus point. Um, all right, in in the pool they're in, maybe not too much of a, a hassle, but in any other pool, yeah. if that was Pool know, B, that'd be a trap. That'd be a, a trap up if that was in Pool exactly. B. Exactly. Can I just but, praise the Uruguayan fullback because he has the best Amaja. name, Baltazar Amaya. What a ah, player! Who, who? Sorry, but who calls her child Baltazar? Uruguayans apparently, but Uruguay, it's a great name. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. good answer. Safe answer that, but yeah, yeah. well done, Uruguay. Brad, was... eh. yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm... we went for a cheeky nutmeg for his try. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I saw it correctly, but it was it was disgusting skill. Yeah, yeah Uruguay, yeah. Uruguay can play. I found a lot of these like tier two nations. They're like attack shape, and all their fun core skills and stuff are just like awesome. They play with this like real freedom. You can tell almost like. Sometimes we, when teams get too professional and too bogged down in playing the numbers and statistics and all that, yeah. you can just kind of like take away from the 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 like the joy and like the natural fun of rugby. And I feel these tier two nations just play with like so much fun, and uh, they've got nothing to lose. So they're just throwing the ball around, they're trying things, and it, like it, it paid off. The biggest dif- differential I've found with these tier two is the is set pieces where it's really it's they're really struggling. Good. Like yeah. they've they can they're handling themselves attacking against like against the best players in the world and their defensive suctions are actually all right but it's the it's really struggling scrum mall which is leading to infringements which means they're losing territory and the kick battles and stuff they're struggling and that sort of all that sort of set piece area but mate, they place the uruguay and stuff plays play such an awesome brand even watching like chile and stuff they play awesome rugby and they've got some really like i've never heard of any of these guys but and i think half of them are probably half of them it must be semi-professional guys they've probably got day jobs and they're playing like 
unbelievable yeah. attack in rugby, which is like, which I think is, as I said, it's just such a, such a good, like, it's the best part of the World Cup for me. It's so awesome. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some some French clubs, maybe some Division Two French clubs, come in, sneaking in, mm. looking at some of these South American players yeah. after this World Cup, the likes of a, an Amaja, a, a Rodrigo Fernandez of Chile, and, and mm. snapping them up on professional contracts because these players are absolutely electric. And uh, just like you said, just the, the joy that they play with. And we saw it catch France off guard, mm. uh, you know, for a large proportion of that match. Yeah, I'd, to be fair, just the last thing on the France game, I'd like to actually praise Cameron Wokey, who came out and went, we did not deserve to win that game. Our discipline was shocking. Oh, All players course. should be like them. Mm. How many penalties did France concede? And It was double uh, figures. It was, it was big easily. time penalties. But it wasn't great. I've got like I, I I've got like fifteen or something in my head. I don't know why it's it was big time, big time. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I think France have well, we'll get to it. But France have named their squad for Namibia this week, and uh, I think they've the poor Namibia. The poor Namibia is going to cop yeah. it for that performance, aren't they? Poor oh. bangers. Speaking of the Namibia, they actually conceded more penalties than France, but that was actually expected. But there was actually yeah. nothing in it. So Uruguay yeah. gave them sixteen penalties. France gave only fifteen. Yeah. yeah the thing with the Uruguayan ones, as I said, I think probably 10 of them were probably at set piece Big at scrum yeah, mall piece, sort of stuff. Whereas the, probably the French ones were them being actually put under pressure by an <clears> attacker <throat> and infringing the breakdown and that sort of stuff, which is they're two completely different things. Agreed. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, we'll, you mentioned <laughs> we'll, Namibia. On, we'll go on to the next game because talking about poor Namibia, um, the mighty All Blacks with a much, chi- much changed squad. Um, took on Namibia, who are still yet to have a win at a World Cup. The final score line reading 71 points to three for the All Blacks. It was it was men against boys, wasn't it? It was um to watch. Yeah, yeah. it was and then the, the can we we need to talk about it because it was all over the ankle oh, break. Yes. The, 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 the ankle, ankle break. break. Oh. Yeah, that was I saw it live, and I yeah. look, it was. I'm glad they didn't show replays. Like well yes. done ITV, awesome because all oh my that um, oh. Oh, I've been on a pitch with somebody who's done that on the pitch, and it's just like oh. it literally rocks you to your core, and you literally almost. I remember what happened, and I was like, I actually don't know if I want to keep playing because it's like, <laughs> oh my god, it's so it's so it's like so confrontational, and you're just like, oh my god, do I want to really want to carry the ball after that, like. <laughs> No, my, uh, my mean, TikTok and Instagram was just flooded with uh, slow motions of, of yeah. his foot facing the complete opposite way to what it should be. Yeah, no, thank you. I actually felt sorry for a friend of the show, Luke Pierce. Oh, oh yeah. My God. <laughs> like, stop, he then just looked and went, nope, and like turned around mm. and said, I'm going to be sick. And I was yeah. just like, yeah, no, was, uh, and then like, like Ardis Javier, absolute monster, was almost... Yeah, you never want to say that. Yeah, no, just... That's why I don't play it. Stuff like that. I'm, I'm glad I'm retired. Just, just watch. I'll talk about, I could talk about it all day, but yeah, poor Namibia. And poor Murray, because he went Anton Hastoy at 10 for fantasy, not Damon McKenzie. Yeah, I think a lot of people mm. are kicking themselves for not going Cam Roy God and Damon, Damon McKenzie at, yeah. uh, at 9-10. <laughs> no, it's... it's... All back to the pack? Lester Fanganuku scored one try. Thanks! Thanks, I took him. He, scored, he, he scored 83 points for me. I took him. Yeah, it was good. Nah, it could have been better. Right? We could have had mm. somebody said it to me. Somebody had Roy Gard, did the captaincy thing, so times three, and got 400 yeah. points. Yeah. That Roy Gard yeah. kid is very good. Mm. Very, very good. Yeah, I was going to say, it's one of those games where you can't really take much uh, away from the game for the All Blacks because it was... Uh, if it, it felt like an extended contact session, yeah, but, great uh, session on TV. What 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 I think you can take away is, in my eyes anyway, and his cameo against uh, South Africa at Twickenham, uh, where he scored the All Blacks solo try with a bit of individual brilliance. Uh, yeah. Cam Roygaard for me has has taken that that number two spot after Aaron Smith in place yeah. of Finley Christie. That's nothing against Finley Christie, but to have a player like Cam Roygaard on the bench. What an impact he can make! Yeah, uh, yeah I think that's that real food for thought for Ian Foster and Mackenzie performed well again against Namibia. But you know, a good performance is a good performance. It's just that but damn it's... smile, isn't it? I've never seen someone smile so much kicking a ball. 
It's actually unsettling. I feel like that's maybe why Namibia struggled because mm. if, if you woke up to that, you know, smiling at you, oh, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah. Namibia get three points, hey! which, is, which is more than we can say for another result, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> You've missed the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> um, we go on to the Saturday. Yes. Salmoa versus Chile, which was actually, oh. regarding the scoreline, 43-10 to Salmoa, actually a, a fairly exciting game at parts. Very good game. Again, one of those games where, you know, Chile, similar to Uruguay, it's, I think it's that South American flair, you know. Mm. You know, Rodrigo okay. Fernandez, I'm in, he's, he's, he's like, he's up in my top three fly halves at the moment for me. He's, he's absolutely electric. Oh. And uh, their fullback as well. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Chile's fullback. He, the man with beautiful hair. That's who I remember. Beautiful, he has That's what we'll go with. beautiful uh, head of hair. The Chilean Fafta clerk. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, again, I think Samoa just similar to what Ollie said, set piece, dominant. Um, you know, especially when they put their replacements on. Having a player like Theo McFarland um, yes. is... Is just, that guy is beyond good? Yeah, I'm looking, I'm always, looking forward to playing with. Him. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with him when he gets back. A fellow, a fellow, a fellow Saracen there. Yeah, um, yeah that guy. I've had him on my dream team. Um, what was that? There you go. You could you, so anyone in the prem that's going against Saracens, you've got to try and push Ollie, who has Theo McFarland. Going, no, we've got this right up behind Ollie. Good luck. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's uh, another Premiership title for Saracens, I think. I'll take it this time. I mean, yay! yay <laughs> every every other year, I've been pissed off about. Like, that, no, I'll take it now. It. I'll <laughs> take it now. Yeah. Um, just make sure you beat the Chiefs. But uh... no, 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 <laughs> round, no. We got them round one. Round first prem game is Exeter Sarri, So, ticket, tickets, ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Dick, <laughs> look at him. Tickets. It's all about who you know. Don't ask, don't get. Yeah. That's all. That's all. I, could, I could, I can get you some. There we go. See, can oh. we come in? Yeah. No, um, yeah, so, <laughs> it's a long trip down to, to Exeter. Fair, as a, yeah, it's about an eight hour drive for me. The only reason Murray does this podcast is for the tickets, <laughs> please. Every, every, everyone's got their agendas, mate. I like it's fine. Well, I'll just do it because I, I like to, I to have the possibility of a drink with the guests. That's always that's always a positive. Mm, there we go. There you go. But yeah, how good was it to see Christian Lillard final back on the international scene? It's 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 one of those things where, especially with the Pacific Islanders, the new eligibility rules, yeah. um, seeing these players return back to uh, the likes of Samoa uh, and Tonga and Fiji to an extent as well. Um, actually, I don't think Fiji have much in the way of it. Fiji haven't pounced on it yet. But I Fiji feel like they will, but they don't need yeah. it. Fiji have the drawer, don't they? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Tonga and Samoa really need this bolster, and it's shown because Samoa are looking very good. Yes, Samoa and Fiji are looking very good, but Samoa especially. Um, you know, especially I'll go back just before the World Cup. The game get the game they played against Ireland. <sighs> that was that was yeah. you know, for Ireland. That was close call, a very close call. Could argue Samoa should have won that, um, but. You know, Cam, Cam's trying to get all the Irish people to hit him this season so far. Oh He's no, hundred percent. Yeah, no, Ireland, Ireland, <clears throat> my number one enemy, and I am Ireland's number one enemy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for the World Cup, anyway, once the World Cup's over, I'll I'll go over to to Dublin and have a Guinness with them all, and we'll make friends. Or I'll get you know brutally beat up, but well, well, either goes either way. Ollie, do you have any like trans Tasman eligibility? Just, enough. just England and Australia. So I've, I've I'm, I'm British. Uh, so in, if I don't get picked for Australia for another year, then I'll be English qualified again because I got the, I got an English passport. Um, okay. so just the, just the two. But would you I'm rather see you playing in a white jersey or a, or a gold jersey? I've, I'm a wallaby. I'm a wallaby right now, mate. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get another call one day, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Ed, Eddie, get it sorted. Just, I'm just, just it. but anyway, we we had a 
a villain and a villainous role, like Panama's villain in the second game with Wales Portugal. Oh yeah, Louis Summit with the old. Uh, <laughs> um, that was yeah, that was against Portugal, man. You don't got to do them like that, Jesus Christ. You do realize yeah, everyone's got to do that, man. Every yeah. team is playing them. No, well, against Portugal. Against Portugal, so I want. I actually want like. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like the most random player now from Pool C to. Well, they've 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 got uh, Georgia. So are we going to see like Niniashvili just hit a dirty sue? <laughs> can't I can't imagine it's in the Jordan DNA to hit that. <laughs> no, I don't imagine yeah. so. Um, Beckham Giga doing the sue. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, that would that would that would cause an earthquake from the size of his quad. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, but Wales Portugal. Uh, twenty eight. Eight, but yes. the score line doesn't really show that Wales really struggled to get the bonus point here. Yeah, they really, really struggled, struggled to get the bonus point. And I've seen a few people uh, comparing the way Portugal were playing to how uh, you know Fiji traditionally play, uh, sort of the, the the European Fiji they were calling Portugal. And oh, yeah. you got to agree because Portugal again, you know, great quality and the the try they scored the little. Yeah. It was almost like a. It felt like a um, a grassroots club rugby lineup move that you go for something yeah. that you'd never think of pulling off at a World Cup, and it yeah. worked because Wales was snoozing. But yeah, it reinforces the point I made before. It's like they they got nothing to lose, and they play with a freedom that a lot of a lot of tier one nations don't because it's a low percentage play or something, and you've got yeah. you're so structured, and everyone's got a got a role to play. But you do that stuff, they, and the way they attacked off just in general phase play, they're just taking they, they just play rugby. They look up, they see where the space is, and they and they play to it rather than having things mapped out to them. And it's like it's it's great. I I, I thought Portugal looked great. All the South American teams we said before, like it's and yeah, I just love the joy that they play with and the freedom because it's such a nice yeah. change up. And the fact that you look at a, a team like Wales, who you know maybe they're, they're not in the best spot at the moment. I mm. think we all know that, but uh, historically, you'd think a Wales Portugal game would be an absolute blowout, and uh, yeah. twenty points in it in context. Um, yeah, well, the, you know. I think I saw in the lead up to that game that the last time they played at a World Cup or something, Wales won 100... like a hundred and two nil or something. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say the last. Well, time how far game. have we come? But the thing is, like, you 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 see teams like Georgia, Portugal, and Romania. To be fair, they they run that European Championship. They run yeah. it, and I'm talking like they're putting 80 points left, right, and center on the likes of you know the other Germany. teams, like Poland, right. Germany, all them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, they're they're quality teams, but again, I think it reinforces the fact <clears throat> that the step up to that tier one standard with the set piece, I think, is the big dom- denominator. Yeah. Uh, in some points, the physicality and uh, the organization, but mm. you know, with a bit more of that, these teams could be. Absolutely up for it. Come come another four year cycle. So yeah. true. Is, is, you mentioned physicality. Yeah, we may as well get the the last game of Saturday out of the way. Ireland I, versus Bonga. I don't think the scoring does that game justice. Again, we, no, it sounds very, very cliche. We said this like for every yeah. game, but Tonga just they are big lads. I feel like people underestimate just how big. Oh, like Ben yeah. Kamafuina, who weighs 150 kg on his own. The mm. hit he put in. Who did who did he who who did he hit? Was it? I'm not sure. He hits everything. He put guy. a massive <laughs> put a massive hit on. Was it Ringrose or Keenan or? Yeah. It was absolutely. You could hear the sla- the ref wasn't anywhere yeah, near. Slab, yeah. And you heard that you heard the slap over the ref mic, and I was like, "That is a rib breaker right there." Imagine that man just planting his feet and hitting you like that. Oh, yeah, man, they are. Their their starting front row was over four hundred kilos just between, just between them. Uh, it's wild. It's wild how big those boys are, and like, like to you, you know, give it to them. Like they don't they don't seem like. They're obviously massive. They're not the most mobile people, but they're never like out of. They're not out of position. They're not making. They're not making they defensive. The- er- yeah, they're not making defensive errors because they're walking around getting done for lack of it. Like they, they're usually in the right spot, and they're so big and so powerful. Like they're not, the f- obviously not the fittest blokes in the world, but still, they're not being found wanting. 
at all against one of the one of if not the best test team at the moment in the in the world in Ireland. Like they, like I thought Ireland looked very good. They look they look the real oh, yeah. deal. Ireland looked the real deal. Like they, I was expecting it to be a close closer game than it was to be honest. But their little they've obviously Andy Farrell looks like a bloody good coach. Like the way he was, he obviously was playing inside balls back towards the rock and all that sort of stuff is obviously something that they've picked up because then they did it twice, made two line breaks and scored off both of them, I think, early yeah. on. Um, but yeah, Tom, I mean, they're, they're, I think they're going to... I still think they're primed for an upset somewhere. Like, I could see... Scotland. Them. South Africa. <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, what, what impresses me about Tonga is the just the athletic about some of their players. I mean, you've got uh, the, the the Scarlets pair with Vai Fafita and Sam mm-hmm. Lousy, uh, both yeah. sort of second row slash back row players. But uh, especially if, if if you tune into the the URC, you, you've probably seen the Scarlets play. The mm-hmm. way those two play, they almost play as an extra two, like an extra centre pair. Because yeah. those two, not only are they back row slash locks, but they're also playmakers for the Scarlets. And, um, you know, for Tonga to, to, to have the access to players um with that ability and old um uh charles pietau uh god he stepped hugo keenan a couple oh. of times made him look silly and hugo oh, keenan yeah. arguably one of the best fullbacks uh, there's there's nothing you can do again i've i've had that a few times playing against bristol and stuff where we've kicked to him and i'm the kick chase and he's just like looked me dead in the eye but oh there's a tight end there <laughs> and it's just like there's honestly nothing you can do apart from just guess a direction he's going and hope you get it right because his yeah. The ex- like his of the time you guess the wrong direction. <laughs> honestly, is honest. There's nothing you can do when he's got you one on one with those feet. Like it's on. I don't know how he does it. And like the explosiveness he gets off one step, and he like just changes direction and then accelerates so quickly again. It's I'm so envious because I could never do such a thing. I think every bone in my body would snap if I try to pull off one of them. But like I'd look like an idiot and everything would get injured. So I just don't. But. It's yeah, it's crazy. His footwork no, is something else. Charles Peter's thirty-one years old. Yeah, he's no, seventeen. Mm. He's, he's he's still top top form. Yeah, but, um, magic. Now, Ollie, I reckon in your next game you you pull out a cheeky goosey. <laughs> I don't mind a little. I don't mind a little goosey, but not the those like. <laughs> Massive wax where he's moving. Yeah, like... you feel like the impact on his knee must be absolutely yeah, colossal yeah. to change direction like that. Yeah, I've got. I got. I don't want to put my full body weight through laterally through yeah. my knee if I don't have to. You know. Oh, um, the next game... you said that there, so it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! You forgot to praise the main man, Sexton. The oh, yeah, Johnny Sexton's time... Ireland's top uh, point scorer. Uh, yeah. It was a bit more. Oh, I'm joking. I'm Jeez, joking. I'm joking. No, it's a massive achievement. It is. Yeah. And the, the way the way he broke the record with a try that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was nice yeah. as well. Hell yeah. of a try. And the joke was, do you think he's broken the record because his celebration was, uh, you know, he knew he he was counting his he points. Knew, he he, he, knew he, yeah, he would he know. If you were ever in a position to break a record like that, me, you'd he know. He strikes me as the guy who, yeah, he strikes me as the guy who who has counted every point of his career up until this moment to beat Ronan Agara. <laughs> probably, I was going to say, uh, no. Agara, he has probably just been like, "I'm beating you. One of these days, I will be better than you," and uh, you can't argue it now. No, Pretty Johnny impressive. Sexton is the the best Irish player to play this game. Probably. Yes. I, I think I think that's a fair enough argument. Yeah. No, massive. And he's... Sorry. No, I can't. I interrupted. I was going to say, he's still to, to, to be. How old is he now? 36, 37? 38. He is... Wait, 38. He's older than VP now. Just let that he, sink in. To be 38 years old and still wow. be so, so vital to your team. Like, so Ireland, Ireland do not look the same team without Johnny Sexton at the helm. And uh, yeah, he's he's gonna go down in history as one of the yeah. best fly halves in rugby. So. Yeah, that is that's seriously impressive. I'd say him and him and Brian O'Driscoll are on level playing field as the best Irish players ever. Oh, I'd yeah. imagine now you can't you can't forget old Bod. Yeah, yeah. Th- um, I was just double thinking there. Yeah, thirty eight years old. VP now is thirty seven, and Alan Jones is thirty six. But Sexton's still older than them. That doesn't even wow. sound right in my head. Wow. That's to be fair, I played with Gussie Creevy last year and he's thirty he's thirty eight and still running around like spring chicken. It's crazy. <laughs> there we go. Crazy. Must be something in the in the water then for the old mm. boys. 
Yeah, you just some people, some people can just keep on trucking, and they still. You can tell when people still love the game because yeah. you get to a point. I imagine I'm 30 and my body's starting to feel a little bit achy. Like another eight years, I'll try. We'll see how it goes. But God, I'm yeah. 23 and my body feels like. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, like, uh, regardless of it being South Africa and being my team, uh, I'm going to gloss over the next one quite quickly because 76 nil South Africa, Romania, um, yes. the, the, the fastest bonus point in, uh, rugby world cup history, Corbus Reinach, um, now holds the first and second fastest hat tricks in world cup history. Um, we played four scrum halves. Uh, we played two <laughs> back rows who also played hooker. We had a bit of fun, and yeah, I felt felt really bad for Romania. It's just I'm pretty, like a... sure, I'm pretty sure the way I described it over on TikTok was Mapimpe three, Reinach three, Williams two, and everyone else got a shot thrown in. Happy days, literally. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's just it's good, I suppose, for the points difference, especially coming to the end of this, going to the end yeah. of the pool. Points difference could play a play a part. Uh, I think it says something that we can send out uh, a, a second string team with four halfbacks oh, and uh, essentially three hookers, I suppose, slash back rows, and and yeah, still. No, I was going to say, Dion and Mark Van Staden is not a hooker. They are man. Bree, Bree's on the bench at, at hooker this week. Yeah, this week, yeah, but. Yeah. Nothing red on bench makes sense. This and week, I can't so. lie, I know, I know it's against Romania, but both of them had a go at throwing in, looked pretty good. Both of them had a had a go at parking in between the the props come scrum time. Again, against Romania, I know, but looked pretty good. Mm. I think if you put me between Ox and Shea and Trevenier Carne, uh, I think <laughs> I'd feel, I think I'd feel quite quite confident. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. No. Um. The big test is this weekend, obviously, Ireland. Yeah. It's it's going to be a big <laughs> test. Uh, we've announced our team. Um, we've gone with a seven-one bench. Oh, oh, I see. Did you see the grin there, Ollie? Did you see it? <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling to hear this African accent coming out of the we. The man saying we, we, we. But <laughs> wait till game day, and it's all yeah and on the bra and <laughs> yeah, living in uh, living in there. Oh, we no, go. No, no, <laughs> Live living in Wales for uh, Christ. 12 years now is they'll get you going it's gone but um yeah that's a big one this weekend but the score line yeah it's just a bit of fun just a bit of fun for the boys yeah that's probably one of the only games against the tier two nations that was a tough watch that was no. a bit of a at, what point, at what point if you're on that if you're on that Romanian team just go fuck this <laughs> imagine <laughs> Romania right they right they've got Ireland first <laughs> South Africa yep. second, Scotland, and then they have to play a Tongan team full of ex All Blacks. Yeah, I'm starting to think Spain might have been DQ'd on purpose. Just like I don't want that group. Yeah, they saw me raw, and they're like, "Nah, I will." Uh, That's tough, we'll, we'll honestly. Cap another Emma Little player. Yeah, I'd say mostly. Uh, most of the other tier two nations probably have one game where they're targeting me. Like we could win this, oh, like yeah, those guys. Be- yeah, Romania. Are, pff, yeah, they're up. Tough. They're up shit yeah. creek. We do need to apologize for the next game. Terrible of a guest. I'm sorry, mate. Oh yeah. But um, actually, this is this this mm. is where um this is where I wanna I wanna pick your brains a bit because I wanna see what your opinions on the uh, yeah this game are. Fiji versus Australia. Fiji mm. getting a historic win, the first win against uh, Australia in 69 years. Wow. Winning the game 22-15. Um, outscored in terms of tries, but um, winning the game in the most un style. Yeah. Winning the, game based on, winning the game based on a dominant set piece. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant over the ball and place kicking. Yes. Yeah. Very and not, hemisphere of Fiji. Yeah, and not Very... just not just place kicking. I was speaking about this today. Like there was a period in the second half where Fiji and Australia were in like this kick battle and it was going back and forth. And yeah. those like those are, are really important moments in in pro pro rugby. Like we practice those kick battles and staying in the fight, staying in the transition, making sure we're keeping our lines and like playing kick ten essentially. Like, when have you ever seen a Fijian team win? A crucial. That's like a, that was a in a, a clutch 
point in the game, a crucial, crucial part of the game, and they're winning a kick battle against not 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 being the ones to break first and just being like, oh, screw it, yeah. we're going to go and run and try and like they stayed in the fight and they won set piece, they won breakdown, they won kick battles. I was I could. I I was worried going to the game, and then I saw them win in that manner, and I'm like, oh my god, this Fijian team is like an actual yes. quality rugby team, not just freak yes. athletes who throw the ball around. They are like a, the real deal. Hundred percent. I think in the uh, the Pacific Nations Cup, I think we saw the uh, the start of this new Fiji team. We saw them utilizing the driving mall. We saw them uh, throughout the whole of that competition uh, with mm. the dominant set piece. Yeah. Uh, and but then to bring it to a World Cup against opposition like Australia, um, and to prove themselves like that after an absolute nail biting loss to uh, to Wales, yeah, uh, yeah, they're they're keeping their World Cup dreams alive. But this um, game, this game is just a start of what's been already a fantastic year for Fiji rugby. Just break it down. We were talking about this earlier. The the draw is now a great feeder pool for. Yeah. The national team. A quality team at that. So the Drua beat Crusaders, me and you covered it, Cam, by a point in Fiji. Biggest awesome. Super Rugby franchise ever. Awesome. Drua won. The first ever playoffs in franchise history this year. Done. Yep. They beat England for the first time ever. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> They've done that. And now they're beating Australia at a Rugby World Cup thinking they probably will get further than the ball. And who do they have left? Portugal and Georgia. Yeah. Like no and I'm not no disrespect to Portugal and Georgia, especially Georgia, a very quality team, but the way this Fiji team are playing. Honestly. Big score lines are coming. Um would you try what, and tackle sorry, I just want just because player of the match and Ollie's here and I can mm. I back Ollie and most head to heads, but would you run it straight against Joshua Tuasova? I don't know if um, I'd win. You know I'd, what, try. Yeah, um, I, I'd try. I try. I, I don't know <laughs> how successful. I don't know how successful it would be, but I'd give it a go. Um, yeah, it's, God, it's they're just like legs. all of them are just such a like unbelievable athletes. Like I, I played with Albert Tuasui for a bunch of years, and that boy is yeah, same. Yeah. Just like he's just so thick and solid, and the way when he carries, like he just think boys just fly off him. And they've just got they've just got like fifteen Alberts, oh, yeah. and it's just like what is going on? Like you look at their whole. Minus their front row, everyone else could be a six, an eight, a center, or like you have not. They're just all the biggest freak athletes, and yeah, for them, obviously, that I I don't know their coach personally or their coaching setup, but they've obviously been coached extremely well to drill this this like professionalism into a team that traditionally just just like kind of plays with this reckless abandon where they have they've kept their their flair and their propensity for offloads and that attacking sort of style but they've just added this incredibly professional set piece kick chase all this sort of stuff and they're just awesome mate like i can i can if they get out of this pool which they're in a they're in a good spot now very good spot but i can see them making some waves in the knockout stages honestly be great Mm. It's, it's funny that you mentioned like how big Fijians are because obviously the Lamy matter or to Northern Hemisphere mm. fans Bell matter yeah. but he's always big Bell and now I thought yeah because he's muscular I had no idea till the end of last season he's actually 6 foot 7 he's a it's big one he's just massive yeah and it's he's freaks. so soft spoken they're so soft spoken which always. is actually frightening it's just yeah. like nice to meet you I'm going to hurt you mm. but yeah, all of them the same. They're the most lovely people ever off the pitch. So relaxed, just laugh Don't and chill, them. and then they just flick a switch, and those boys can play. Yeah, but um, you know, in in terms of Australia, because I think we've said multiple times uh, on this podcast that the Australian <laughs> team, you know, playing now has heaps of potential. The players they've got playing yeah. are, are quality, quality players. But you know, I feel like what they lacked in that game especially was a big physical presence. Mm-hmm. Obviously the the loss of Will Skelton um yeah. going into the match was, you know, obviously a big, big loss. He is a massive physical presence himself. Mm-hmm. But going into just World Cup selection, um, you know, Ollie, what are your opinions on on the admission of uh, a guy like Michael Hooper or uh, a you know a, a Quade Cooper? 
you know, these players who have been left out, these senior players, which you think maybe in test matches like this could offer the extra bit of experience, and especially with the likes of Michael Ho- Hooper, the extra bit of grunt yeah. needed to, to get through these matches. Yeah, it's definitely... Um... If you if you asked me before the squad came out, this wasn't wouldn't wouldn't have been the the squad I anticipated or mo- any anyone anticipated. That's kind of Eddie Jones' just thing. He kind of makes some rogue, rogue picks and stuff. That's always kind of in his way, and a lot of times it's worked out. Um, mm. But I do feel like that sort of that experienced, cool head in a big World Cup pool match where you're down by six seven points with 15 minutes to go and you've had the momentum against you and having like a a a couple of older statesmen who've been there and done it and can sort of steady the ship and know how to like marshal a team um there that's invaluable invaluable Mm. um and yeah i'm not sure if they had that on the on on the pitch in the crucial times uh on the weekend um yeah, it's it's hard for me to comment too much on on selection and all that sort of stuff. When yeah. one day I'm hoping to get another call, so I don't want to burn any bridges. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely an, it's almost like a some some things seem a bit experimental when it's in a a time and or in a tournament where it's not real. I wouldn't have thought it's the time to do yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, so. Yeah, it's 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 odd, um, but they, I think they definitely missed Willie Skelton and Taniella big time. Like they are both of them are probably their some of them in this squad, especially some of their more experienced players, um, and the ones that would they go to if they go forward. It's kind of like Robbie Valentini, Taniella, and Willie are the boys. You kind of just like to get them go forward and get some go forward ball, so then they can release sort of the the guys they had. I think they really struggled to get get go forward through the middle against this big Fijian guys. And then every time they kind of tried to strike the, they were up against a full wall of defense who was getting line speed on them. And they're just knocking them behind the, behind the game line, which forces them to get, to kick, kick the ball away. Yeah. I do look, I do look at this, this Australian team now. And I think, you know, what could they be given another cycle, another four years, to the next yes. World Cup? A very young team, this team, we're going to see the majority of them at the next world cup yeah. cycle. Big time. And I think, you know, brand new coach rough rugby championship it was expected i think mm-hmm. um you know rough run up to the world cup and so far a fairly rough world cup um but i i genuinely do think this australian team has such a high ceiling and given another world cup cycle regardless if eddie jones you know stays with them yeah. for the whole cycle or whatever yeah I, you know might not be their year their world cup this time but come the next world cup i can definitely see them pulling it together 100%. yeah there's, there's obviously a, a, a long-term plan put into this um mm. and i think the fact that they've got a lions tour coming up in australia and a world cup in australia is i think they are the the things that they want to build towards big time Definitely. um uh yeah I, I, I don't i don't know the ins and ins and outs of the selection and stuff i've got I obviously speak to a few boys who are in camp and st- at the world cup right now i'm good friends with, with a lot of the guys in the squad um but they and they're all obviously there to win it and they they're they're going going as hard as they can but i think that this core of the group that they have brought to this world cup will be the ones featuring in the lions tour in the next world cup and that sort of stuff and they've got to love these guys at some point and usually teams do that at the start of a cycle but it seems like australia's kind of done that at the end of a cycle in the world cup to prep for the, for the next one. But who knows? Um, it could, who knows? We could pump Wales by 50 points on the weekend and go win the world cup. Who knows? They're still, they're still, Let's do it. they're still, I love it. come on. I love, no. how they, I love how the switch went there from all of being like, you know, I'm not trying to bash the team. I'm trying to get a call for the dog. Let's fucking beat Wales. Okay. <laughs> it's a, can it's we mate. actually just talk quickly before we move on to the most mm. boring game of the round? Yeah, can, can we talk about how good, about 50 22 from our friend Nick White, mate. White, mate. <laughs> White, mate. To, oh, Marky Mark, not working at the Wasi. Yeah. Oh, 200 IQ play, t- takes the quick uh, takes the quick line out into Karevi, back to Nawakina Tawase, scores the try. Ah. That's what I'm talking about. These these yeah. players are, are quality players. They just, they just need to pull it together. Yeah. 
and they were the that's that's a big, big key moments for them. And then every other time it seemed like in general play they made inroads and had any momentum. Every time we got into twenty two, two three phases, bang, turn of a penalty, and it's just like. Fiji was just that's what, Fiji was so good in the big big moments in that match. Whereas traditionally, they haven't been. They've done all everything right, and then in the key moments, they've kind of crumbled. In the other years, they had six seven moments, including that kick battle, including clutch set piece, including all the entries into the twenty two with what we had. Fiji just came out and made clutch plays every single time. Um, so yeah, if we are going to lose, I'm glad we lost to a team like that because they're so likable. I find yeah. like anyone else but the Wallabies, I just like that. I root for them against anyone else. Everyone's because it's second just, favorite team. Aren't yeah, they? honestly, because they just play the. I just think they just play the right way. They've got such a good balance between playing the right way and then being awesome at the fundamentals now as well. Oh, hundred percent. Um, oh, I do you want to talk about something else before the boring game? <laughs> no. What, what else is there? Um, uh, in- England beat Japan. Anyways, uh, uh, moving on. <laughs> I'm so anyway, one, one thing, because it was actually a proper high school error here. So the court of was try where Joe Marr were bang, up and went. Oh, it was and planned. Went. It was planned, I reckon. Planned. All planned, yeah. But yeah. It was planned. Why was why did Japan just stop and ref? No, I think more. everyone. I think everyone thought yeah, Will Stewart knocked it whistle, on. I think, yeah, <laughs> you, you always talk to play the whistle, but sometimes in the moment when you, it looked like in when I was watching, I was like, oh, yeah, it's knock on, and that's then, not fun, yeah, yeah. But obviously it wasn't, and Court of Laws played on. Well done to him. But, so yeah. think, shout out to Joe Marler on his social media this week, who's mm. fully embraced it. He's had the Ronaldo header. He's because <laughs> yeah, he's a Brighton fan. Oh, it's just. Brilliant marketing. I'm all good for oppo- them. Good opposite. Good opportunity to you know push the push the promotions on yourself. Oh, there we go. You've got to take it. Got to take it. Um, oh, you have to try next well, game. Can I just say one thing about this game in terms of England selection? <laughs> yeah. Owen Farrell obviously uh, supposedly me. back for the next test. I can't look past George Ford. No. How would you put Owen Farrell back in there when you've got George Ford playing the way he is? Because he's a Saracen, mate. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. There we are. That's all the reason. Yeah. Uh, you can play him at 12. Have you met Owen yet? No, nah, not yet. I've played against <laughs> him. Yeah. I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't met him yet, no. Um, but yeah, I'd say that what's it, their next game is against Chile. So I think it's probably the, the perfect time to have a bit of rotation on that and bring... Marcus that, starts and Paul still doesn't start. I'll, I'll say. Maybe. I don't know, but... Um, to get them no, some, no, some minutes Mar- and stuff. They, they want uh, Marcus at fullback, they don't want they? Marcus play fullback for some reason, but why would um, you do that? The likes for Freddie Stewart at fullback, you know? That, yeah. that's it. that was the best 10 seconds of that game. The George yeah, Ford cross field kick to Freddie. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, it wasn't Freddie, the... Beautiful. It wasn't the... England don't play the most, like, uh, visually appealing rugby. Oh, uh, no. Joking, yeah, it's... it's <laughs> It no, is... you've got to give them credit because they, they had an awful build-up and they found they found a way to win games in a World They'd... Cup. And yeah. Coming down to it, that's all you need what to matters. do regardless if it looks bad or not. They played the same same when Borthwick and stuff were at Leicester when Leicester won the Prem. They played yeah. the exact they played the exact same way and yeah. they they won. And that's um, the thing. Georgie Ford was was um, Steve Borthwick star boy at Leicester for that exactly. For that yeah. And those <laughs> and those boys, those that Leicester team kicked the leather off the ball, and they yeah. and they kick chased, and they mauled, and they and they won. Um, yeah, it's not that of eighty minutes. If you, you win, you it. win. Like there's no better yeah. no better marketing for you got, for for English rugby than winning. So I can understand why they're doing it as a as a fan watching it it's like sometimes i just wanted to like i don't have any hair but i wanted to pull my hair out (laughs) yeah it was just like (laughs) they get they get like they do like two or three phases they get momentum from football they're like 20 25 meters out from the try line and they do a little dink over the top i was just like (laughs) (laughs) but like yeah, they they obviously they scored four tries and they got a bonus point win. They so. got the bonus yes. point, yeah. Yeah, and then Japan, I know Japan played pretty well. I thought as well. Like oh, at first, though. yeah, they just couldn't get stuff. They just couldn't finish the it. Knock-ons. Yeah, it looks sweaty. It looks humid, and sometimes, honestly, playing in humidity when it's sweaty like that, it's actually harder than when if it's bucketing down with rain because the ball's. Oh, I said this in the last episode. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. 
it's almost like Ollie Watts is a show, but he's not on the host. I reckon he does. I reckon. Or maybe you, got, you guys have just got high rugby IQs. You yeah, know? just top. There we uh, go. See? Don't say stuff for clicks. I'm there like, we go. I'm you wouldn't to say so with some of my predictions that I've been given, but uh, yeah. yeah, high high rugby IQ. Talking about predictions, oh, we've got some game. We got a game tomorrow. Better, yeah. But for Thank those who are we're recording right now at eight o'clock on Tuesday evening. So yep. this will be out very early morning. So yeah, you're gonna have to get this out early. Chop chop, Murray, get to chop, chop, chop on this one. Yeah. yeah. So good. Uh, uh, Italy versus Uruguay. It's gonna this be a great game, I reckon. Game. It's gonna be a great game. Yeah, really good game. I'm go- I, like actually, where are my where are my predictions? Let me bring up my predictions on the uh, the World Rugby app. Uh, the sorry, Rugby World Cup app again. Doing You're not free- sponsored, it doesn't matter. No, but if if I keep doing it, maybe they'll give us money, Murray. That's my theory, anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, uh, the Italians. What yes. did I say? I said Italy by twenty-one points. Oh, granted, I might be giving a bit too much credit to Italy. Not saying yeah. they're a bad team. You know, no. I love Italy. Barry. I think Italy are good, but I think Uruguay are a good team as well. Like, I, did, both... I did make this prediction before the Uruguay France game. I went a yeah. week in advance of my predictions, so I'm thinking now. Hmm, I'd say, like, it, I reckon Italy by twelve to fifteen is kind of my yeah, I can thinking. See that being a realistic one, yeah. Um, yeah. Couple tries, maybe a couple late tries, yeah. Um, we, we spoke about that last time that was that was actually with Namibia that, yeah we know you're going to win but simple it's like slow down you don't have to rush yeah, everything I think that's that'll be a big one for Italy in this game and against tougher opponents in Uruguay they they seem to look to overplay against Namibia which made yeah. them look you know I, they, they could have easily stretched it to 60-70 points over Namibia <laughs> if Italy just played smart rugby yeah I'd say after Uruguay's performance against France I don't think Italy will be walking into it maybe like they did with Namibia being this is a foregone conclusion we're going to win I think maybe they'll be Uruguay get a bonus point maybe a couple bonus points you never know yeah um, mm. they'll be they'll be taking them seriously so but yeah anywhere between 12 to 15 ish I reckon Italy, Italy will win I'd be very surprised if they don't but I think it's going to be a competitive game and a good watch I've just realised I need to do Ed and rapidly quick because I thought it was an eight o'clock kickoff. It's actually a quarter to five kickoff tomorrow. Oh, there you go. Late choppy, choppy. Oh, night. I love my job. Late night. Yay! It's fine. I mean, you you could let me edit it, but it would be an absolute travesty. No, no, no. <laughs> no touchy. Stay away. No touch. I'll just upload it as it is. See what happens. <laughs> Presence is bad enough. No, no. <laughs> Okay, that's just like okay, it's rude. <laughs> um, moving on because we'll just ignore that you said that. Um, <laughs> France versus Namibia. Mm. Yeah, France and oh. France have field, fielded a very good team. Mm. Gauti got pissed off at the Uruguay game. That's what that tells me. Took yes. that one personally, didn't he? I'd and the if... fact that you've got. Big Jonathan Dante and Cyril buy back in the squad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's if if any game's gonna get close to a hundred get close to the triple figures. Here we go. This, this could be the one. A bold click a bold clickbaity clip if you want. I think France could get Holly Hoskins says France yes. to put two hundred oh, points on. They're gonna score five hundred <laughs> points. No. <laughs> David no, but Pino's gonna smash the record in one game. There you go, started. Yeah, he's Pino's gonna score eighteen tries, and it's game. <laughs> uh, but no, that, I, I I could see them getting eighty points plus. Like oh, a point, oh. a point a minute is very like it, it could happen. Very like flag job that. Just mm, yeah, yeah. I, I I have got France by eighty three. Oh my god. I, as soon I'd, as I saw I'd, that France lineup, as soon as I saw that France lineup, I changed. I had initially because I thought they're going to play the the Anton Hastoy, Luku, the B mm. team. <laughs> no, um, I had them by fifty five initially with their yeah. B team, and then oh. they 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 showed me a Damian Peno, a Jonathan Dante, and an Anton Dupont, uh, and a Thomas Ramos, and I said, mm, okay, eighty three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just shows like how does Macaulay not make like a. A side like that's how good France are. Like Macalou is so good. He's not even in the twenty three, and this is their top team. Maybe yeah. like to have a, to have a guy who can cover 
like competently cover the back row and the wing. Like yeah. well, yeah. well, right. yeah, like well, do it well as hundred percent. Um, yeah, but you know what? You, Namibia shock us, beat France, do it. Why not? Yeah, I hope it's not. I generally hope it's not an eighty-three point drop, and I think it will be, but I hope it's not. You know but, what? Mm. Always convince me. I'm going for the triple digit. I'm going for a hundred. I'm going for it. I'm keen now. I want. I kind of want to see triple it have a lot. Digit, triple digit. <laughs> I want to see a triple that digit. Is, that is not in the spirit of the underdog, Murray. <laughs> Oh, bugger the underdog! I'm what I want bloodshed in it. No, don't. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I have I have got Dante Ramos and Penno on my fantasy team this week. So, yeah. France. How, many, how, how many Namibia players you got? Um, Argentina yeah. versus. <laughs> this is going to be a game. This so is going to be a game. Because Argentina looked really, really bad against England. Yeah, they're not bad though, but they had a bad they're outing. Not bad, but they looked bad. And Small looked good, so Samoa. I think this is a this mm. is a coin toss. Honestly, I think this is going to be one of the games of the games of the round. General, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm going to just I'm going to let fate decide it. Fate decide it. Were you flipping a coin? Mm. If I could find one, yeah. Flip a coin. Well, whilst you're flipping the coin, mm. I've gone with my head. Yeah, and I've said Argentina by eight. Can you flip a fiver? Yeah, and I've said yeah, yeah with with you know, I don't know. I just feel like they've 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 had a week off yeah. from the England game. They they've Michael Check has definitely given them the biggest bollocking in in rugby world history. Yeah, um, you know we we all know old Michael Check is a, a pretty theatrical coach in himself anyway. Yeah, it's quite chill. It's quite chill. Yeah, very chill, chill bloke. Yeah, mm. um, yeah. I think Argentina will do it. Yeah, but I think Samoa will, will make them work for it. And but it's one of these games where I could see Samoa winning it quite easily as well. Definitely, I yeah, I'd I'd go Argentina by ten ish. Yeah. But if you told me Samoa won by ten, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, I can't believe that. Especially yeah. with the players that they have access to. God. See, I just can't look past the fact that this Argentine and this Argentina team has beaten the likes of the, you know the Aussies have beaten the likes of the All Blacks in um, New Zealand, you yeah, know, in Christchurch, of yeah. all places. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd um, like Samoa to do it though. I'd like Samoa to get to the quarters. I really mm. would. I would. My see, my head says Argentina by seventeen. My heart says Samoa by three. That's a both of them, like that's it's a, it's a it's tough one to good. predict. It's a tough one to predict, isn't it? This yeah, this one. Uh, I'm gonna stick with Argentina by eight. I will do, but yeah, um, yeah it could go either way. This yeah. next one, this next one's even more either way. Oh. We, Georgia versus Portugal on uh, on the Saturday, and these guys are are quite common adversaries. Obviously, play each other yeah uh, a lot. Uh, they've they've met each other a lot. Um. Yeah, like I said, these two teams run that that rugby Europe competition. Um, absolutely run. I'm talking. You know, if you look uh, at the at the you know scores over the past few years, eighty points is a regular sight in that competition from Portugal and Georgia. Um, I think in recent hit- history, Georgia have the edge. So I've gone just based off that, Georgia by nine points. But. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't really know. Portugal looked really good. Georgia looked fairly decent against Australia in that first game. Just, yeah. I feel like outclassed, you know, player mm. player to player. But um, um, yeah. Oh wait, oh wait, go first. I feel you I'll, your sort of... I'll do it. I reckon Portugal by six. Ooh, okay. Like yeah. yeah. I'll, mm, I'll say Georgia by five, just to keep it really tight. Up yeah, the Portuguese. Yeah. <sighs> I'd like Portugal. It's a big sigh. Yeah, I'd, it's I'd, another. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those games where I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't see enough of the two teams to really say. Right, this team can do this, and this team can do yeah. this. It's one I of those. With, I pick up my heart there. I pick up my heart. I just want the Portuguese to get a win. There we go. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. England versus the Chileans. Chile by one. Please, that'd be amazing. It won't happen, but 
Rodrigo Fernandez mm. to uh, to step Marcus Smith and so score. Well, welcome to yeah. against England. Mm. I'd say yeah. England will win. The more the better debate is how many tries will England score. Yeah. Um, okay. Will I, they I, get a bonus point? <laughs> yeah, probably. Sure, probably. Yeah. Sure, I've, said, I've said England yeah. by twenty eight points. Oh, by a bonus point. Yeah. yeah. I'd yeah, I'd say England by thirty plus, you'd have to say. Yeah. But I think Chile for the first I think Chile for the first fifty minutes will be right in the game. Maybe not on the score sheet, but we'd be right in the game in terms of playing the ball, causing yeah. England some issues, yeah. you know, that exciting rugby that they do play, maybe catching England a bit flat footed at times. I can see them getting a try or two, but at the end of the day, I think England will <clears throat> kick the leather off it. I think their forwards will just tire out Chile. Yeah. Uh, and I think by the end of the day, mm. we're just going to see in the last sort of the last quarter, just a yeah. flood of tries from England. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think Chile would have ever played <clears throat> against someone as a team as like disciplined to a game plan as, as England. Oh. And they'll, and yeah, but to, to their <laughs> game, plan, they, they know what they want to do and they do it. Over and over and over and over again. Yeah, there's no and, wavering from that plan. Yep, and I feel like Chile will get frustrated at some point and do a silly thing, and England will take advantage of it and score, and then the yeah, go and repeat, go and repeat. So, yeah, I'd say the last twenty minutes the score could open up, but I wouldn't surprise would be surprised if England only winning by ten or so points at halftime. Yeah. Fair. Mm. Now we're going into the bias corner because it's one for each of us. Yay. Mm. Do we even have to look at like, we've not even said the game yet? Look at his face. South Africa versus oh, Ireland. What a belter. What a belter fact, we have. I won't be able to watch this game live. Well, I'm, I'm a Shania Twain concert. Priorities. You got, priorities them, you, got, yeah. you got them right. You got them straight. <laughs> the priorities are top tier. Uh, <laughs> I think for your sake, Murray, you want Ireland to lose just to make you feel more confident about beating them. Tell you my prediction is South Africa to win. I always knew I liked you, Murray. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is gonna be a game and a half. And listen, yeah. like I, I, I could be the the cocky South African that I sometimes say, and I, I'd be like, oh, South Africa to do what they did to New Zealand and blow Ireland out of the water yeah. by. To you know, twenty eight points, but Ireland, are like you know, they've gone with consistency in their first two games. They played their pretty much their strongest lineup. A few alterations here and there. Andy Farrell loves his consistency, and it's working for him. Um, yeah, it's it's just going to be a turgid affair. It's going to be a physical battle. The set piece is going to be immense. It's going to be Ireland's, Ireland's um, you know, quick ball speed with Gibson Park playing, uh, you know, nine of those rucks, getting the ball out quickly, matched up against South Africa's relentless line speed, that rush defence. Mm. Uh, I, I, I have a I have a deep sinking feeling in my stomach that um, it could be decided by a kick if it doesn't go our way. Uh, with Manny Leboc maybe not being the best off the kicking tee, but uh, mm. part of me also says, you know, he he's he did it mm-hmm. against the All Blacks. He got his form right. He could do it now. But yeah, I think uh, I've got South Africa by nine. I've got <laughs> I, I I'm back in my boys nine points. I think I think the set mm. piece will be the the winner. Our forwards and the set piece will be the winner, yeah. and that seven one bench. If it all goes to plan and we don't get any backline injuries, bringing seven forwards on at once, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a game changer. Yeah, the depth the depth they've got in the pack is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. But if Ireland can punch like get some go forward through the middle and and stop that sort of rush defense, then they definitely they can win this game. I'll probably. 100%. And if there's someone who's going to be able to pick the right options and be able to marshal that sort of chaotic defense at Safka run, Sexton will be able to do it. Sexton, yeah, I, like, I agree 100%. And if they know, can, we're... if they can, if the, if the thing is with that rush defense, if they're shooting so high on the outside and you can just get a, a punchy, punchy quick ball through the middle and go again whilst they're backtracking into their offside, that's how you can, that's how you can get them. Um, and Sexton, 
can can marshal that. In saying that, I'll probably say Safka by three or four. I think it's going to be super close, super close. I'd, it's a tough one. I just I don't it comes know. Down to I, who wins it more, I think. Yeah, I just I every time to prove himself at a World Cup and South Africa mm. wanting to retain the World Cup. Well, yeah. do me a favor, Cam. The first time I'm actually backing you to do something. This World Cup. No, I didn't have to say it like that. Christ. <laughs> well, <laughs> you said we're all in the same pool. We're all enemies. Uh, no, I'll, I'll be easy in the middle. I'll say South Africa by six. Yeah, all yeah. the same. Sort I'm of liking park. the unanimous backing of the Springboks. Yeah, I'm liking it. When South Africa look good, I just I watched them and I'm like, how do you beat that team? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's they're, they're one of the only teams where they're like, when they're looking so good, I'm like, I just don't know how you deal with that. They're so physical and so good at what they do. And then they bring on another entire pack who's just as physical and just as good as the starters. And it's just like, how do you deal with that? Um, Ireland can, but yeah, I don't know. It's hard to just like when they're on their game, it's just hard to think of anyone who can beat them. Fair enough. All will, all will be told. I've, I've, I've booked the day off. I booked the whole weekend off, but especially Saturday <laughs> I took as a holiday off. <laughs> Just for the Island uh, Springboks game. Nice. But, um, yeah, well, go on. Murray, your boys are back in action against a Tonga. Mm. Good game. One. Good game. It'll be, a, it'll be a good game. Very physical, but yeah. see, it's tricky because everyone does the whole, well, last time you played each other, well, last time we played each other, the rule wasn't in place yet. Tonga That's didn't true. bring out the Harlem Globetrotters. We played. Yes. Oh, no. I'm trying to even remember the team. Yeah, so, all the local boys. Yeah, yeah, you you, you played you played some bloody semi pros. Yeah, very much. I put sixty on them, but I said we do yeah. it again. Yeah, I don't know about sixty. I'd pick Scotland, but I just think we just need a big win. I'm not arsed by the number. We need a big win. I've got Scotland by twenty one. Mm. I think you get a bonus point. I think you yeah. comfortably get a bonus point with the likes of a Duan van der Merwe. I th- I think like you you convinced me that you're gonna throw out your best team. Not I was, I was in the mindset that. of we could be seeing like a, an Ollie Smith, a uh, uh, Kyle Stain, uh, you know, getting a run out. But uh, you know, Kyle Stain did score four the last time for Tonga. But again, like I just said, it was thing. I, I Kyle Stain's a quality player, but um, I do think you go full whack because I do think it's it's a game where you haven't got a point in the pool yet. Sorry about that. Um, oh, well, there was a need. You're you're gonna want that bonus point. You're gonna want that points mm-hmm. differential. Um, I think the yeah. thing, the reason I think we could could run away with it is we should, especially in that first half against Hughes, we can go physically. We know how to handle it. No, and the fact that I... the fact that we've had that now, it's like, cool. That's what we do. We just go forward with it. Yeah, I think and set so, piece. Like we said yeah. it so many times already. Set piece for you boys. Your set piece is quality. I mean, you were winning scrum penalties against Stephen Kitsoff and France Malherbe, for God's sakes. Yeah. You've got a quality set piece. You've got a quality forwards. Um, <laughs> but I would really like to see Charles Pietel step Darcy Graham. I think that would be uh, that would be a, a funny funny moment. Ches and Colby did it, so mm. why can't uh, why can't Charles Ches Pietel? and Colby and Darcy Graham got a bit too close to each other. But we spoke about that last time. Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. clearly into it. But I think uh, it yeah. comfortably. back your team is the rule, even though it is not going well for me in the comment section on TikTok when I say that. Oh my god, the slitting I'm getting. But yeah, <laughs> back your team, hundred percent. It's gonna get a comfortable bonus point one. This last game, Ollie. He always said he already said it halfway through. He said what was it? Australia by fifty, you said? Australia yeah, I don't, maybe not by fifty. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> Um. Yeah. The Aussies this... versus Wales. It's a must-win game for both. Both. Yeah. You would think definitely. Mm. Uh, especially, especially with Wales' history against recent history against Georgia. Um. Mm. Yeah. Oh. I. It's. It's because both teams. I feel like Australia have been finding tries easier. Whereas Wales have been really, especially against the likes of a, a Portugal, struggling to find those tries. Yes, it it comes down to who do I think out of the two whose whose game plan is going to come out on top, whose 
going to, obviously every rugby game comes down to who's going to score the most tries, who's going to score the most points, but just based on, you know, I'm looking at those players head on head for every position, picking their best teams possible. I've gone with Australia by six points. I've gone with the Aussies. I think, you know, you you look at a Mark Nawakina Tawase and he's done it against uh, Georgia and Fiji. He can score those tries. You look at a guy like Samu Karevi, you know, when he's playing well, God, he plays well. Yeah. If Will Skelton's mm-hmm. back, he brings back that big phys- physical edge. Same with the uh, old Rob Valentini. Um, you know, and if you if you go for like, if, if Tupo and Angus Bell are fit, I feel like you dominate that scrum as well. I think it. I think it'll come together for the Aussies, mm-hmm. and I. I think you get maybe not the bonus point win, but I, I think you. You get. You get the win. Yeah, I. Th- I obviously look at it with Wallabies tinted glasses, but I. I do think that after that Fiji game, <clears throat> the boys are pretty prime for a good performance and i think as you said i don't know it's if you go just head to head matchups across the park i think it's, the wallabies boys win a lot of them um yeah. and yeah if they're ever going to turn it on this has got to be the time like this is I a mean, this is going to die really literally is this is massive game not just but for just australian rugby in general this game is needed like it's it's so i I'd, I'd say wallabies by 12 that's kind of yeah. I think I think they'll. I think it's going to be their best performance of the World Cup, and I think they're going to hopefully save their skins. And because going out in the group stages would just is something I can't compute in my noggin right now. We could be in a situation where Wales beat Fiji, Fiji beat Australia, and Australia beat Wales, and then it just comes down to who can beat Portugal and Georgia by more by the most. That's what we said for Pool B. So, that's our pro- it's that's what we said for Pool B, but uh, to be honest, mm-hmm. I think I think with Wales, Australia, Fiji, and Georgia, and Portugal I, punching above their weight, I think this is probably the most difficult pool to call. Yeah, a massive headache to have. It's a good massive. one. Massive. Yeah. I'm going to go for the unanimous decision of back the golden. Is it gold and green? Green and gold. It's yeah, gold and green, but they say green and gold. But yeah. Okay, I was always I always say yellow, but it's not. It's gold, even though this gets more oh, orange. Sorry. Mm. I'm gonna say Wallabies by I'm gonna say by 19. I feel like just go, Ooh. just go for it. I want I want Marky Mark to just why I want Nick Wanai to just be a shit house because we all know he can. Yeah, they've definitely got the players to do it, and they definitely. Uh, you, they've had spells in the games that they've played this year where they look like they could tear any team apart. Um, wow. they're, they're, they're obviously they're, they're doing something. They they're trying something. It maybe not. It hasn't come off hundred percent yet. But if there's any game for it to all click and all come together, this is the game. Um, wow. Yeah. Eddie Jones for and and ball. if they win it, if they win it, the pool becomes that much more interesting. Yeah, uh, it's just a forever headache, isn't it? But it really is. Jones Gatland, what's this? Five? Their fifth encounter? The dance against each other? They're common adversaries, aren't they? they yeah. Uh, I can't actually tell if they like each other. I don't know if they do this just for. I think I think they do have a lot of respect for each other, I'd say. Respect and liking each other is two very different things. Yes. Yeah, I respect you, Murray. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're, you're, my, you're my favourite Scottish person and you're my favourite South African that actually lives in Wales actually no Ewan McGregor is probably my favourite Scottish person Ewan McGregor do you even know Ewan McGregor yeah no you don't <laughs> don't, don't like me of course I do okay I mean, do I know him <laughs> no of him well, it took a weird time to end it but Thank you so much to Oliver Hoskins for getting to come on. It's been a while. It's been a bit. What, yes. A year and a bit or more. Can't remember the last time. But yeah, it was last, sometime last time, probably about a year a ago. Let's, we have kept in touch. It's not like I've not yeah. just like completely messaged you. Out <laughs> hey, man, no. I haven't spoken to you in about a year, but do you want to just come on the podcast? No, no, I haven't. No, more We've... than happy. Thank you for having me, guys. You're you very well. It's been an absolute, absolute pleasure chatting to you for the first time, Ollie. Uh, appreciate you coming back on. 
Thanks, um, man. Yeah, absolute pleasure. There we go. And we'll stand on that. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. Hit the follow. Hit the subscribe. We will be doing clips on TikTok. We will try and pump out the clips on TikTok. We, we might clip- do another live at some point. It's it's tough because me and Murray have very busy schedules. Me with work, you know, and Murray is a has a, a mini me in the house who's not very well at the moment, which is yeah, fun. He is perfect. Mm. And when I'm not being a dad, I've got the whole weight of a nation on my shoulders because that's an artist <laughs> job. The only man bought back in Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, that really is, that is man. I don't know what is going on. But anyway, YouTube, Spotify, TikTok, Instagram. I say LinkedIn, but it's my LinkedIn. It's not Cam. Cam doesn't do LinkedIn. Yeah, no, I, I don't want LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. It works. LinkedIn. We've got we've got some guests out of it. Go and check out. Go and check out the interview with Ollie. It's a bit old. He was a London Irish player then, but most still. of it still holds, most of it still holds up. Definitely. Yeah. Dog, wife, Dungeons and Dragons. We're there. There we go. Yeah, well, there. that's me in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> we've got Casey Lala interview out. We've got another one filming this week. Another World Cup winner. Cam, you'll be happy. It is a Springbok. Mm. Old Bob Skinstad. Bob there Skinstad, you go. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. So, yeah, not much else to say. Give us a listen. Give us a watch. Hit the follow button because we need the numbers up because it looks sad right now, even though we are trying. But, we do try. Hey, that's all that Most matters. Views. We'll see you next week for more of the World Cup that starts again on Wednesday. Next week. I don't know why they're doing that, man. But... Who knows? That's what it is. But we will see you next time.